Hello, welcome to the course on data governance and uh, this lecture on data security. I am Linus and today's table of contents are first some definitions on data security, business drivers, goals and principles, essential concepts, activities, tools, techniques, implementation guidelines and finally the sources so, data security. Data security includes the planning, development and execution of security policies and procedures to provide the four A's. That is proper authentication, authorization, access and auditing of data and information assets. The goal of data security practices are to, to protect information assets in alignment with privacy and confidentiality regulations, contractual agreements and business requirements. And these requirements come from stakeholders, clients, patients, employees, students, citizens, suppliers and business partners all have privacy and confidentiality needs that must be recognized. Government regulations. Some restrict access to information Others ensure openness, transparency and accountability. Proprietary business concerns. If confidential proprietary data is stolen, a business may lose competitive advantage. Legitimate access needs. Business processes require individuals in certain roles to be able to access, use and maintain data. Contractual obligations. Some data is influenced by contractual and non-disclosure agreements. Effective data security policies and procedures ensure that the right people can use and update data in the right way and that any other uses and updates are restricted. Business drivers. The primary drivers of data security activities are risk reduction and business growth. Security is a valuable asset in its own right. Risk reduction. Security organizations are often tasked with managing not only IT compliance requirements, but also policies, practices, data classifications and access authorization rules. Data security should be handled on an enterprise level. If different business units implement their own security solutions, costs may increase and the overall security levels may suffer. Data security begins with identifying which data requires protection. And steps include identify and classify sensitive data assets. Different industries and organizations deal with different amounts and types of sensitive data. Locate sensitive data throughout the enterprise. Security requirements may differ depending on where the sensitive data is stored. Determine how each asset needs to be protected. Data type and technology influences what measures need to be taken. Identify how this information interacts with business processes. Determine what accesses are necessary and under what circumstances. Access uh, uh, access external, that is hacker and thieves, as well as internal, such as employees and processes, security threats. Internal security incidents are often the results of missing or unenforced security controls rather than malicious intent. Security as an asset. One common approach to data security is through metadata. Creating a master repository of data classifications enables all parts of an organization to know the levels of protection required for different data sets and elements. Security related metadata becomes a strategic asset increasing the quality of transactions, reporting and business analysis while reducing the costs associated with protection, regulation nonconformance and data loss. One common tool for managing metadata is Apache Atlas, which we will take a look at later on in this lecture. 
data security versus cyber security. Data security aims to protect the confidentiality, integrity and availability of data. It is a subset of the broader concept of cybersecurity, which involves protecting the entire digital environment from cyber threats. They are, however, closely linked, and a robust cybersecurity strategy involves data security measures, while effective data security contributes to the overall cybersecurity of an organization. Goals and principles. Goals of a security program are enabling appropriate as access and preventing inappropriate access to enterprise data assets, enabling compliance with regulations and policies for privacy, protection and confidentiality, and ensuring that stakeholder requirements for privacy and confidentiality are met. Principles. Collaboration. Data security involves IT security administration, data stewards and data governance, internal and external audit teams and the legal department. Enterprise approach. Data security standards and policies must be applied consistently across the entire organization. Proactive management. Success in data security management depends on overcoming organizational or cultural bottlenecks such as traditional separation of responsibilities between um, information security, IT, data administration and business stakeholders. Clear accountability. Roles and responsibilities must be clearly defined. Metadata driven. Security classification for data elements is an essential part of data definitions. Reduce risk by reducing exposure. Minimize the amount of sensitive data, especially in non-production environments. Essential concepts. Here follows a number of key terms related to information security. Vulnerability. A vulnerability is a weakness or defect in a system that allows it to be attacked, essentially a hole in an organization's defenses. Some vulnerabilities are called exploits. Examples include computers with out-of-date security patches, web pages not protected with secure passwords, users not trained to ignore emails from unknown senders, and software vulnerable to commands that will give an attacker control of the system, such as SQL injections. Threat. A threat is a potential offes offensive action that could be taken against an organization. An occurrence of a threat is also called an attack surface. Threats can be internal or external and not always malicious. An uninformed insider can take offensive actions without even knowing it. Each threat should match a capability that either prevents the threat or limits the damage it might cause. Examples of threats include emails containing virus-infected attachments, denial of service attacks which overwhelm processes and leaves the organization unable to perform business transactions, and exploitation of known vulnerabilities. Risk. The term risk refers both to the possibility of loss and to the thing or condition that poses the potential loss. Risk can be calculated for each possible threat using the following factors. Probability that the threat will occur and its likely frequency. The type and amount of damage created each occurrence might cause, including damage to reputation. The effect damage will have on revenue or business operations the cost to fix the damage after an occurrence, the cost to prevent the threat, including by remediation of vulnerabilities, and the goal or intent of the probable attacker. Risks can be prioritized either by potential severity or by likelihood of occurrence. Prioritization of risk must be a formal process among the stakeholders. 
Risk classifications. Risk classifications describe the sensitivity of the data and the likelihood that it might be sought after for malicious purposes. Classifications are used to determine which roles should have access to the data. Example classifications include critical risk data or CRD, personal information aggressively sought for unauthorized use bo by both internal and external parties, High risk data or HRD, data actively sought for unauthorized use due to its potential direct financial value, and moderate risk data, MRD, non public information that has little tangible value to unauthorized parties yet would likely have a negative effect on the organization if it was stolen. Data security organization. Depending on the size of the company, its security organization will differ. In all cases, data managers will need to be involved in data security efforts. However, in many organizations, IT and data management lack standard procedures for collaboration and information sharing. An en enterprise data model, categorizing and describing sensitive data, is an essential part of an effective data protection program. Security processes. Data security requirements and procedures are categorized into four groups known as the four A's. Authentication, authorization, access and auditing. A fifth category, entitlement, has been added recently. The means to implementing policy and certifying the four A's are information classification, access rights, role groups, users, and passwords. Security monitoring is also essential for proving the success of the other processes. The four A's. Authentication. Validate users access via passwords or more stringent methods such as security tokens or biometrics. Authorization. Grant individuals privileges to specific views of data appropriate to their role. Access. Enable individuals with authorization to access systems in a timely manner. Audit. Review security actions and user activity to ensure compliance with regulations and conformance with company policy and standards. Entitlement. An entitlement is the sum total of all the data elements that are exposed to a user by a single access authorization decision. A responsible manager must decide that the person is entitled to access this information before an authorization request is generated. Monitoring. Systems should include monitoring controls that detect unexpected events, including potential security violations. Some security systems will actively interrupt activities that do not follow specific access profiles, blocking accounts or activities until security personnel have evaluated the situation. Other systems are passive, tracking changes and comparing trends against certain criteria and sending reports to the person accountable for the data. Data integrity. Data integrity is the state of data being protected from improper alteration, deletion addition. Encryption. Encryption is the process of translating plain text into complex codes to hide privileged information, verify complete transmissions or verify a sender's identity. Encrypted data cannot be read without the proper decryption key or algorithm which is usually stored in a separate location. Some common methods of encryption include hash, symmetric or secret key, and asymmetric or private public key. Please note that this part of the lecture differs somewhat from the source uh, material in the Dharma DM book, as there are some minor differences in the terminology used. Hash. Hash encryption uses algorithm to convert data into a mathematical representation. 
Strictly speaking, hashing is not an encryption technique, but rather a way to get a unique representation of the information while keeping the content secret. It's generally a one-way process. Common algorithms are Message Digest 5, or MD5, and Secure Hashing Algorithm, or SHA. Hashing is commonly used to compare records, documents or senders without revealing their actual contents or identities. Uh, and here is an example of hashing using the Hashlib module from the Python standard library, uh, where we first import a Hashlib module, we create the byte string of some data to be encrypted, and we encrypt the data using the SHA-256 uh, mod uh, model and, and uh, we encrypt the data uh, and when we print the encrypted data uh, we get a string of hexadecimal values uh, and this is the representation of the uh, raw string some data to be encrypted uh, in its encrypted form. Symmetric. Symmetric key encryption uses the same secret key for encrypting and decrypting data. Symmetric key algorithms include Twofish, Serpent and the Advanced Encryption Standard AES or Reindel, which was developed by the US National Institute of Standards and Technology, NIST. And here is an example of encrypting and decrypting data using the symmetric key method uh, using the cryptography library, uh, which is a third part uh, Python library, commonly used for encryption related tasks, where we uh, start by importing the Fernet uh, object from the Fernet module. We generate a key, this key can we then use to create a Fernet object or an instance of a Fernet object? We again create some data to be encrypted, uh, and by using the Fernet method, we encrypt a token. So we use our uh, Fernet instance to encrypt our raw string, and when we print the encrypted value, uh, we have a string of letters and numbers, and we can also uh, use our uh, Fernet instance to decrypt our uh, encrypted token and have our uh, original message back. And uh, in order to be able to uh, encrypt and decrypt the value, the key uh, generated uh, must be used. Uh, so this here is the key. Uh, to encrypting and decrypting the message or the value. Asymmetric encryption. In asymmetric encryption, the secret key is divided into two parts. One public key used to encrypt the data and one private key used to decrypt the data. The public key can be shared while the private key must be kept secret. Common methods include Revest Shamin Adelman or RSA, Key Exchange, and PGP or Pretty Good Privacy. And here is a short example of uh, the asymmetric encryption, uh, again using the cryptography library, uh, where we start by uh, importing some uh, functions and objects. Uh, we denote a key size uh, and then we generate a private key using the generate private key uh, function uh, and we create a public key from that private key. So now we have a public key and a private key and we can use our public key to encrypt uh, some data. Again we have some data we would like to encrypt and here we can uh, use the encrypt method on the public key instance and uh, with the padding uh, set here we can encrypt our data and again write it in hexadecimal form and this is actually a quite a long string because it has been padded uh, so that it is of a certain length uh, 
to further uh, obfuscate the the actual value to to make it harder to to uh, decrypt uh, without the private key because we can finally use our private key to decrypt the data again we, uh, we use the uh, so in in the here we use the public key uh, and we use the encrypt um, uh, method on the public key and in the final example we use the private key instance and we use the decrypt method um, we want to decrypt our encrypted data and this here is uh, what we get the same data that we started with which was what we wanted all along so uh, that's some examples of uh, different encryption techniques in python uh, obfuscation or masking uh, is another method for making data less available uh, masking removes shuffles or otherwise changes the appearance of the data without losing its meaning or relationships to other objects or systems obfuscation is convenient when displaying sensitive data on screens or creating test sets from production data there are two types of data masking persistent and dynamic persistent data masking persistent data masking permanently and irreversibly alters the data this type of masking is generally used in between production and development or test environments and in-flight persistent masking occurs when the data is on its way between the source and the destination. And this is very secure as it leaves no intermediate file or database with unmasked data. In-place persistent masking is used when the source and the destination are the same. The unmasked data is read from the source, masked, and is then used to overwrite the original data. And this method assumes that the data is in a place where it should not be and or that a copy exists in a secure location it is also more riskful and the in-flight method is generally preferable dynamic data masking dynamic data masking changes the appearance of data without making changes to the underlying data this is useful when users need to access some sensitive data, but not all of it. For example, a database might store personal identity numbers using the year, month, day, and then the final four format, but only show the first eight digits in certain situations. Masking methods. Masking methods include substitution, replace characters or whole values with those from a lookup or as a standard pattern, shuffling, swap data elements of the same type within a record or between rows, temporal variance, move dates forwards or backwards a number of days, small enough to keep trends but large enough to avoid identification, value variance, apply a random value within a certain range, nulling or deleting, remove data that should not be present randomization replace characters or whole values with random characters encryption use one of the methods described earlier to render values unrecognizable expression masking change all values to the result of an expression for example change all entries in a free form database field that might contain sensitive information to be this is a text comment. Key masking. Mask database key fields. Make sure that the masking process is unique and repeatable. Network security terms. Data security includes both data at rest and data in flight. For data to move between systems, a network is required. Data security needs to be part of a greater cybersecurity system. Here follows some terms and concepts related to network security. Backdoor. A backdoor refers to an overlooked hidden entry point into a computer system or application allowing unauthorized access. Many backdoors are created by developers for maintenance purposes. Examples of backdoors include default passwords left unchanged and vulnerabilities created by malicious software. 
all backdoors are a security risk. Bot or zombie. A bot or a zombie is a computer that has been taken over and is remotely controlled by an attacker. Bots are used to send large amounts of spam, perform denial of service attacks against legitimate businesses and hosting fraudulent websites. A network of bots is called a botnet and according to the cybersecurity firm, firm Thales, 32% of all internet traffic in 2023 was associated with bad bots. Cookie. A cookie is a small data file that a website installs on a computer's hard drive to identify returning visitors and profile their preferences. The vast majority of cookies used by websites are perfectly harmless, but they are also sometimes used by spyware. Firewall. A firewall is software and or hardware that filters network traffic to protect a single computer or an entire network from unauthorized attempts to access or attack the system. Firewalls can scan both incoming and outgoing traffic for suspicious activity and prevent it from passing through. Perimeter. A perimeter is the boundary between an organization's environments and the outside world. This is typically where a firewall is placed. DMZ. Short for Demilitarized Zone, a DMZ is an area on the perimeter of an organization between two firewalls. DMZ environments are used to temporarily store data moving between organizations. Super user account. A super user account is an account that has administrator or root access to a system. The credentials for super user accounts should be tightly controlled by time, user ID, location and other requirements. Keylogger. Keyloggers are software used to record the keystrokes made by a user of a computer and send them to another computer. Passwords, documents and other sensitive data may be captured in this fashion. Keyloggers are often installed by malicious software or infected documents. Penetration testing. Penetration testing is when an ethical hacker tries to break into a system from the outside to test its defenses. Results from penetration tests can be used to address vulnerabilities before releasing an application or deploying a system to production. All software contains potential vulnerabilities and should be periodically tested. When weaknesses are found, no blame should be applied, only security patches. Virtual Private Network, or a VPN. A VPN used the unsecured internet to create a highly encrypted tunnel into an organization's environment. This tunnel can then be used to securely communicate with an internal network from the outside world. Virtual Private Cloud, VPC. A virtual private cloud is the cloud version of a VPN. It's a secure, isolated cloud within a public cloud. VPCs can be used together with VPC service controls to create perimeters within a cloud environment to further protect sensitive data. Devices within the perimeter typically has no connection to the outside cloud. Types of data security. Data security involves not only preventing inappropriate access, but also facilitating appropriate access to data. The important least privilege principle states that a user, process or program should only be allowed access to the information they need to perform legitimate business tasks. Without permissions, no user should be able to see data or take any action within the system. Facility security. Facility security is the first line of defense against bad actors. A locked data center with access only for authorized employees is a minimum for any facility that handles data. 
employees must have the tools and training necessary to protect data in the facilities. Device security. Mobile devices can be lost, stolen and physically and electronically attacked and so are inherently insecure. Such devices often contain documents and email that can damage an organization if they are exposed. A plan to manage the security of mobile devices must be a part of an organization's overall security strategy. Device security standards include access policies regarding connections using mobile devices, storage of data on portable devices such as laptops, DVDs, and uh, or USB drives, data wiping and disposal of devices in compliance with data management policies, installation of anti-malware and encryption software, and awareness of security vulnerabilities. Credential security. Each user is assigned credentials to use when obtaining access to a system, often a combination of a user ID and a password. To keep track of users, credentials and access policies, most organizations use some sort of identity management system. And it's often a good idea to implement a single sign-on system where a user logs into a workstation and all authentication and authorization are executed through a reference to the enterprise user dictionary. This minimizes the number of user IDs and passwords a user have to keep track of, stopping them from using unsafe methods to remember different passwords from, for different parts of a system. User ID standards for email systems. To keep user IDs unique, most organizations use some combination of first and last names and sometimes numbers to create email or network IDs. It's generally discouraged to use employee ID numbers for email or network IDs, as these are data that should not leave the organization. Password standards. Every user account should be required to have a password set by the account owner with a sufficient level of complexity as defined in the security standards. When creating new accounts, the temporary password must be set to expire immediately after the first login and the user must choose a new password. How often users should change the passwords is under debate as requiring users to change them too often might lead them to write them down. And here we see a recent security mis mishap where in October of 2024, customers of Chinese 3D printed filament supplier Eson received an email informing them of a website system upgrade. And as part of the upgrade, all account passwords had been reset to the email address connected to the account. This is of course a massive security failure and should not happen anywhere at all. And to the left we see a screenshot of the email sent to uh, the Eson customers uh, from reddit.com. Multiple factor identification. Some systems require additional identification procedures. These include entering a temporary code into a connected device, using a hardware item that must be connected to the device logging in, or providing biometrics such as fingerprints, facial recognition or retinal scans. All users with access to highly sensitive information should use two-factor identification when logging in. Electronic communication security. Users must understand the insecurities of sending information over email or other communication software, including social media and blogs. When data has been sent over these channels, the user no longer controls the data and it can be forwarded, forwarded to other people without the knowledge or consent of the original sender. Types of data security restrictions. Two concepts drive security restrictions. Confidentiality levels. Organizations determine which types of data should not be known outside the organization or even within certain parts of the organization. 
levels of confidentiality depend on who needs to know certain kinds of information. Regulation. Regulatory categories are assigned based on external rules such as laws, treaties, customs agreements and industry regulations. Regulatory information is shared on an allowed to know basis. Any dataset can only have one confidentiality level established based on the most sensitive item in the dataset. Regulations, on the other hand, are additive and any dataset may have multiple regulatory restrictions. These two concepts must form the basis of any user entitlement. Confidential data. Confidentiality levels range from low to high and typical classifications include for general audiences, information available to everyone including the public, internal use only, information limited to employees or members but with minimal risk if shared, confidential, information that cannot be shared outside the organization without a non-disclosure agreement or similar in place, restricted confidential, information limited to individuals performing certain roles with the need to know, and registered confidential, information so confidential that anyone accessing the information must sign a legal agreement to access the data and assume responsibility for its secrecy. Regulated data. Each enterprise, of course, must develop regulatory categories that meet their own compliance needs. These categories should be com combined into regulatory families based on the similarity of their protective actions. Some sample regulatory families include personal identifiable information. Uh, PII includes any information that can personally identify an individual. GDPR separates personal data, such as name and personal identity numbers, from sensitive personal data, such as ethnicity, uh, political opinions and health data. And sensitive personal data has stronger protection in GDPR, and it might be noted that personal identity numbers is uh, somewhere in between. And uh, in Sweden, Integritetsskyddsmyndigheten is the Swedish agency responsible for protecting personal data. Financially sensitive data. All financial information related to an organization that has not yet been reported publicly. GDPR. The General Data Protection Regulation, GDPR, came into effect in May 2018. It should be fairly known by now and followed by most organizations. Uh, Article 5 of GDPR sets out seven principles that permit the entire legis legislation and these are lawfulness, fairness and transparency, purpose limitation, data minimization, accuracy, storage limitation, integrity and confidentiality, and accountability. The AI Act uh, will become applicable in the summer of 2025. The AI Act introduces a uniform framework across all EU countries based on a forward-looking definition of AI and a risk-based approach, where minimal risk uh, is where most AI systems such as spam filters and AI-enabled video games face no obligation under the AI Act, but companies can voluntarily adopt additional codes of conduct. Specific transparency risk. Systems like chatbots must clearly inform users that they are interacting with a machine, while certain AI-generated content must be labeled as such. High risk. High-risk AI systems such as AI-based medical software or AI systems used for recruitment must comply with strict requirements including risk mitigation systems, high quality of datasets, clear user information, human oversight, etc. And unacceptable risk, for example, AI systems that allow social scoring by governments or companies are considered a clear threat to people's fundamental rights and are therefore banned. 
the Data Act. Uh, the EU Data Act will become applicable in September 2025 does not regulate personal data, but rather enhances data sharing and enables a fair distribution of the value of data. Raw and pre-processed data that are readily available to a data holder as a result of the manufacturer's technical design are subject to mandatory data sharing obligations. And the Data Act might have a similar effect on overall data quality as GDPR had for the handling of personal data. Industry or contract-based regulation. Some industries have specific standards for how to record, retain and encrypt information. The most known example is the payment card industry data security standard, the PCI, PCI DSS, which applies to all organizations that accept or process payment cards. System security risks. System security risks include elements that can compromise a network or a database. These threats allow legitimate employees to misuse information either inter intentionally or accidentally and enable malicious hacker access. Abuse of excessive privilege. The principle of least privilege should be applied when granting access to data. Users may be granted access to more data than they need simply because it is challenging to manage user entitlements. And as a result, many users receive generic default access privileges that exceed their job requirements. This leads to the risks of users intentionally or accidentally abusing their privileges. The solution is query level access control where accesses are not granted on database table level but on specific columns and rows within the tables. The process of defining query level access controls are time consuming and need to be reviewed and updated. Automated tools are commonly used and cloud based services generally provide those. Abuse of legitimate privilege. Users may also abuse legitimate privileges for unauthorized purposes. An example may be a healthcare worker who has legitimate access to patient records who decides to export the data and sell it or use it for malicious purposes. Another example may be a teacher who exports student information from a secure location onto their laptop for easier access. And once this sensitive data exists on a device, it becomes vulnerable to theft and loss. A partial solution to this problem would be to not only enforce, ac enforce access policies based on user entitlement, but also based on time of day, device location and amount of data. This would avoid situations where employees export more data than they actually need just to save time. Unauthorized privilege elevation. Attackers may take advantage of database platform software vulnerabilities to elevate access privileges. These vulnerabilities occur in stored procedures, built-in functions and SQL statements. Privilege elevation exploits can be prevented by combining query level access controls with an intrusion prevention system, an IPS. An IPS inspects database traffic and identifies patterns that correspond to known vulnerabilities. If a request is flagged by both the access control and the IPS systems, an attack is almost certainly occurring. Platform intrusion attacks. An IPS is usually implemented alongside an intrusion detection system or IDS. The most common example of an intrusion protection system is a firewall, but as technology advances, this is no longer sufficient in itself. Database platform vendors release security patches to their software as new vulnerabilities are detective, detected, but many organizations update their systems according to periodic maintenance cycles rather than as soon as a patch is released. And this leaves the database unprotected until the update is applied. SQL injection vulnerability. SQL injection is when an attacker inserts or injects unauthorized database statements as part of an otherwise legal query. These statements can be used to elevate privileges or make unauthorized changes to the data. 
always sanitize all inputs before passing them to the database. And the XKCD webcomic by Randall Monroe once described the risks with SQL injections in a humorous way, as seen in figure 2 on the next slide. Social threats to security phishing. Social engineering refers to how malicious hackers try to trick people into providing them with information or access. They use information about the organization to convince other employees that they have legitimate requests. Phishing refers to a phone call, instant message or email meant to lure recipients into giving out valuable or private information. Malware. Malware refers to any malicious software created to damage, change or improperly access a computer or network. Viruses, worms, keyloggers and adware are all examples of malware. Activities. Activities for implementing security controls include identifying requirements, assessing the current state, implementing security tools and processes and auditing data security measures to ensure they are effective. Identify data security requirements. Business requirements. The business needs of an enterprise, its mission, strategy and size, as well as the industry it belongs to, define the degree of rigidity required for data security. Analyze business rules and processes to identify security touch points. Regulatory requirements. Some regulations that have impact on data security have been mentioned earlier in this lecture. Create a central inventory of all relevant data regulations and the data subject area such as IT, sales, HR, etc. affected by each regulation. Add links to the corresponding security policies, policies and the controls implemented. This inventory should be in a format that is easily updated as regulations, policies and data will change over time. Table 1 on the next slide shows a simple example of a regulation inventory table. Define data security policy. Data security policies should be based on business and regulatory requirements. A policy is a statement of a selected course of action and a high-level description of desired behavior to achieve a set of goals. For policies to have a measurable impact, they need to be auditable and audited. Defining security policies require collaboration between IT security administrators, security architects, data governance committees, data stewards, internal and external audit teams and the legal department. Data stewards must also cooperate with business managers who have the data expertise to develop metadata catalogs and apply proper security classifications. Security policy contents. Different levels of policies include enterprise security policy, global policies for employee access to facilities and other assets, email standards, security access levels and security breach reporting policies. IT security policy, directory structure standards, password policies and an identity management framework. Data security policy, categories for individual applications, database roles, user groups and information sensitivity. IT and data security policies are often combined. It is, however, preferable to separate them as data security policies are more specific and require different controls and procedures. The data security policy should be approved and reviewed by the Data Governance Council and owned and managed by the Data Management Executive. Employees need to understand and follow security policies. Compliance should be easier than non-compliance and the reasons behind the policies should be clearly defined. Define data security standards. Policies are guidelines for behavior. 
standards supplement policies and provide additional detail on how to meet the intentions of the policies. One example could be a policy stating that passwords must follow guidelines for strong passwords and a standard that describes what a strong password is. This policy is enforced through technology that prevents passwords from not meeting the standard. Define data confidentiality levels. Store confidentiality classifications in the metadata directory that guide how users are granted access privileges. Any classification method should be clear and easy to use and will contain a range of levels such as described on slide 57. Define data regulatory categories. As previously mentioned, there are many regulations around the world that are data specific. It is often a good idea to group these together such that all regulations that cover the handling of PII, for example, are managed by the same policy category. When confidentiality levels and regulatory categories are combined in the metadata repository, all employees handling data know the sensitivity of the data they are handling, transmitting and authorizing. Define security roles. Data access control can be organized at an individual or group level. For smaller organizations, the individual level may be acceptable, but larger organizations will benefit from the role-based access control. Role groups enable security administrators to define privileges by role and grant these privileges by enrolling users in the appropriate role, role group. Try to assign each user to one group only, creating different user views if necessary. User identity and role group data should be managed centrally and any changes tracked. There are two ways to define and organize roles as a grid, starting from the data, and in a hierarchy, starting from the user. Role assignment grid. A grid can be useful for mapping out access roles for data based on data confidentiality, regulations, and user function. Table two on the next slide shows a simplified example. Role assignment hierarchy. The other way is to create group definitions at a work group or business unit level. A simple example is shown in figure 3 on the next slide. Here we see the CRUD or create, read, update, delete workflow and that some groups have access to all the actions uh, while other groups can only, for example, read or update or in one uh, in one case, only read the data. Access current security risks. Security risks include elements that can compromise a network and or a database. Evaluate each system for the sensitivity of the data stored or in transit, the requirements to protect that data and the current security protections in place. Document the findings as a baseline for future evaluations, as well as proof for compliance. Gaps must be remediated and the impact of improvements measured and monitored. Implement controls and procedures. Implementation and administration of data security policy is primarily the responsibility of security administrators in coordination with data stewards and technical teams. Controls and procedures should at least cover how users gain and lose access to systems and or applications, how users are assigned to and removed from roles, how privilege levels are monitored, how requests for access changes are handled and monitored, how data is classified according to confidentiality and applicable regulations, and how data breaches are handled once detected. Some level of management must formally request, track and approve all initial authorizations and subsequent changes to user and group authorizations. Assign confidentiality levels. Data stewards are responsible for assigning confidentiality levels for data based on the organization's classification scheme. 
The classification for documents and reports should be based on the highest level of confidentiality for any information found in the document. Assign regulatory categories. A classification scheme must be created or adopted to ensure that regulated data is handled in compliance. This scheme provides the foundation when responding to internal or external audits. Manage and maintain data security. When all requirements, policies and procedures are in place, the main task is to ensure that security breaches do not occur and if they do, to detect them as soon as possible. Continual monitoring and auditing of security systems is crucial to preserving data security. Control data availability. Managing user entitlements requires an enterprise data model where sensitive data is categorized. Data masking, or in some cases encryption, can protect data even if it is inadvertently exposed. Relational database views can be used to restrict access to certain rows and or fields. Monitor user authentication and access behavior. Monitoring entails a wide range of activities over a wide range of levels, from spanning across several systems down to certain datasets, uses or roles. Monitoring can be automated, executed manually or a mix between the two. Some automated monitoring should be part of any database deployment. Risks for unmonitored systems include regulatory risks, because many regulations GDPR included require monitoring, detection and recovery risk, if there is a security breach Audit data can be used to find the violation, as well as links to users involved, and may guide in repairing the system. Administrative and audit duties risk. Users with administrative access to a database may be able to turn off monitoring to hide unauthorized activity. Auditing duties should preferably be separate from database administrators and database server support staff. Tools. The tools required for managing data security depends on the organization, the data architecture and the data that is handled. Kinds of tools include antivirus software, employing HTTPS to encrypt data sent over the internet, identity management technology, intrusion detection and prevention software, firewalls, data masking or encryption and metadata tracking, which we will take a little look at. Now, metadata tracking. Uh, one example of a data governance and metadata tracking tool is the open source Apache Atlas framework developed and maintained by the Apache Software Foundation. Apache Atlas is closely integrated with the security framework Apache Ranger and uh, more information about how to use Apache Atlas can be found on the link on the bottom of the slide. Another example is Microsoft Purview, uh, which is a part of Microsoft's Azure framework. Uh, and also here is more information about how to use Purview uh, if you follow the link on the bottom of the slide. Techniques. Techniques for managing data security include a process for installing security patches as quickly as possible on all machines. Users should not be able to delay this update using an enterprise data model to record security attributes in metadata, defining clear metrics for evaluating security measures, identifying security needs when planning new projects, implementing efficient search of encrypted data, and document sanitization, such as cleaning metadata from so documents before sharing. Metrics. Focus on actionable metrics. It is easier to manage a few key metrics in organized groups than pages of seemingly unrelated indicators. And some examples of measurable metrics when it comes to security implementation include percentage of enterprise computers having the most recent security updates installed, percentage of computers having up-to-date antivirus software running, Percentage of employees scoring more than 80% on annual security practices quiz. Percentage of business processes successfully tested for disaster recovery. 
and percentage of audit findings that have been successfully resolved. Security awareness metrics. These areas should be considered when selecting appropriate security awareness metrics. Risk assessment findings provide qualitative data to be fed back to appropriate business units to make them more aware of their accountability. Risk events and profiles identify unmanaged exposures that need correction. Formal feedback surveys and interviews identify the level of security awareness in the organization. And incident post-mortems, lessons learned and victim interviews provide a rich source of information on gaps in security awareness. When selecting data protection metrics, consider criticality ranking of specific data types and information systems, annualized loss expectancy of, expectancy of mishaps, hacks, thefts or disasters related to data loss, compromise or corruption, risk of specific data losses related to certain categories of regulated information, threat assessments performed based on the likelihood of an attack against certain valuable data resources, and vulnerability assessments of specific part of the business process. Implementation guidelines. Readiness assessment, risk assessment. Data security is deeply connected with organizational culture. Building awareness and understanding of security requirements, policies and procedures is the best way to avoid data security breaches. Ways to improve awareness include training, consistent policies, measure the benefits of security, set security requirements for vendors, build a sense of urgency and ongoing communications. Organization and cultural change. One big challenge when developing data security policies is balancing risks with ease of access. Technical solutions must be in place, but in most organizations, the behavior of both management and employees will need to change if they are to successfully protect their data. Implementing data security measures without regard for the expectations of customers and employees can result in employee dissatisfaction customer dissatisfaction and organizational risk. Well-planned and comprehensive security measures should make secure access easier for stakeholders. The sources not already mentioned in this lecture or uh, in some case already mentioned, the DAMA, Data Management Body of Knowledge, Chapter 7, uh, Data Governance, the Definitive Guide, Chapter 7, uh, and uh, the Python examples were from cryptography.io. I thank you for your um, for listening, and uh, I will see you next time. Goodbye.